Alright, so today's video we're watching a Masters 3 support, um, which is top 500 currently on console. This is a console game. And then it's gonna be a Mercy playing Blizzard World. And they say, this game was so rocky. We got steamrolled the first round with the enemy team securing all three points with more than 40 seconds left. My DPS who played Farah for most of the game died every fight, constantly dying. It was super upsetting. My tank was flaming the whole team and wouldn't let us breathe. My other support who swapped to Life Weaver, which is a questionable choice, and I are trying to juggle all of this at once while somehow my Farah is still dying to a junk rat. You say questionable choice, but is this like, was there, were both of you willing to make the swaps at that point, or was it because they were just trying to figure something out that would work across the board? Uh, second round went smoother uh, with us capturing points one and two quickly, which resulted in us having around five or so minutes to capture third point. This is where we struggled. We captured the point eventually, but with less time than the other team did, around 30 seconds. So basically, we were held for almost five minutes because my DPS wouldn't stop dying, and I'm not one to blame people, but you can see their death count. So you are blaming them. It's upsetting. I made a couple mistakes here and there, but that's everyone in this game. I ended the game with four kills, 44 assists, five deaths, 660 damage, 23,934 healing, and zero damage mitigated. I was actually just hoping that you let us know about the damage mitigated, because that, that was my number one concern there of, of, of your mercy stats that you just... Overall, I think it was an amazing game, although frustrating. I also think my skills in eight years of playing Mercy shined well here. Hope you enjoy the watch. It's interesting. LOL. So it sounds like uh, you're mad at your team. Not really, but it sounds like you want to blame your DPS, but you don't want to blame them. And that's basically where we're at. Okay, let's see how this goes. I have no idea what to expect. What rank is this? Uh, this is I get, top 500. It's console, top 500. Which, I mean, Masters is more top 100 now than anything. Like, I mean, even, like, you see that a lot just because when they do the rank squish. Okay. So far, everything's normal, so we'll, we'll just chill and watch. I'm okay with this. Is it an Ego Vaught? It could be. You know what I love about your reaction to the Junkrat? Like, for the first two seconds, you were like, yeah, that's a Junkrat, that's for sure. And then you left. I'm like, okay. Honestly, if your bat doesn't lamp you, you're probably going to get rolled there. Um, a lot of what's happening right now, too, by the way, is... And, and, and keep in mind, the movement's good. But it feels like it also would be helpful to try to find one of your DPS to be with in the meantime. So that way, there's a little bit more of a benefit to them um, getting, like, the damage boost, etc. Also, that was definitely a res attempt that you went for. So, uh, I would be careful of, like, also getting mad at your teammates, in a sense. When, like, you can also... You have a Soldier and an Ash. They just switched to Ash now. But you have a Soldier and an Ash. Like, you have two really solid damage boost targets. Like, heroes that you can... Kind of... There you go. Much better to see. That you can kind of, like, help. And I think sometimes it becomes this thing. And keep in mind, I, I am like this too at times on support, so I totally understand it. If you're a hero that brings like really good utility to your team, right? Like if you're if you're a hero that that brings good utility or brings something to your team, it's okay to like, especially on support. If like if your tank's at like 72% HP or something like that, or even like at the HP you're seeing now, your BAP can probably heal the Ramatra. Like you don't, you're not gonna have to worry about that Ramatra for a long time. And, and, the, and the reason why I say I do this sometimes too is sometimes like. Players just want to see a health bar go up, right? Okay? Like, sometimes that's what people want to do. They want to see a health bar go up, and that's it, which is fine. Honestly, whenever I play a healer in, in games, like like in WoW, for example, like, I like just see health bars go up, even though, like, the meta in, in WoW, a lot of the time when you run, like, Mythic Plus is to, like, you know, run DPS healers, right? So when you're playing uh, support and Overwatch here, you know, while it's enticing to want to heal up your Ramatra in these situations, like, why don't you... Uh, first of all, when I was saying healer, keep in mind, in, in World of Warcraft, it's references healer. Just to point that out. That's why I did that. And then, if you didn't notice, we referenced support in Overwatch. See? Um, but, like, to give you an idea, like, you don't want to, you don't want to, like, sit there and just, like, like heal up your Ramatra at this type of HP when your BAP should be able to handle that. Now, if your BAP can handle that and it becomes an issue later on, that's fine. But, like, you also need to, like, give your teammates 
a good starter. And actually, this is also a little of a segue of why I'm going to be doing that 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 video of like hero selection at the beginning of the maps is because I realize that like at the start of games, a lot of the times players don't play like as optimally as they could. Where like sometimes a good starter to your game can be great. And what I mean by that is like. Maybe you DPS your soldier at the beginning of that game, and now instead of the junk rat getting in the limb, you're seeing everybody fall over on their team and you're holding first point. So, but point being is definitely let your BAP heal the Ramatra and, and, you know, go and like work with your Ashen soldier for a little bit. Then make the adjustments. Don't just default to like heal bot in your tank right away. Now we're, now we're seeing it now, right? Okay. So yes, this is the correct decision by you to just not bother healing them. I actually am fine with that because you wouldn't be able to keep them up anyway. Now your teammates are in front of a window. Your Valk was okay. I mean, I, I don't even mind the Valk because when you Valked, it was... <laughs> yeah, it, it's probably not recommended to even go for that res anyway. I'm going to be honest with you. And I want to talk about this very quickly because I, I feel like this happens sometimes. And keep in mind, once again, going back to like Mercy, like I'm not the best Mercy. So like, can you ever watch me go for like a random res? Like it's not going to be good. So like, if you watch me play Mercy on stream, you're, you're in for a treat, right? Like my reses aren't going to be good, but doesn't mean we can't recognize something here, but I wouldn't go for the res there because you need to think about it from this point of view, right? Why are you going to res a Ramatra all the way back here when your teammates are all backing up right now? So let's say that you successfully res your Ramatra. I mean, you could argue, yeah, but they can go into like Ramatra ultimate at the very best, like do you really want to trade Ramatra ult for Zenyatta ultimate? Because guess what? If Ramatra ult is, it's going to happen. So you have to like weigh the options there. Is Zenyatta ultimate worth the trade off of, of, a, Rama of a Ramatra ultimate? And I think no. I think like Zenyatta ultimate isn't good enough nowadays to justify using your Ramatra ultimate in the back spawn where you're going to get rolled anyway. Right? So like sometimes when you Valk, you want to go for the res, but at a certain point you need to recognize like my team's gone. Even if I res my Ramatra, there's just no follow-up happening. And like, yeah, there's probably a 15% chance your Ramatra makes some, like, unreal, ridiculous play. But, like, why even go for it at that point when the best thing you can do is just kind of back up and, and say, you know what, I Valked. When I Valked, it was correct, and then it didn't work because my teammate died. And that's really it, right? Because the Valk time, it was fine, but after that, you need to, like... This also kind of goes back to what I've been saying. And I don't know if there's, like, any, any communication happening here, but, like, if your soldier wants to ult there, you should already be with your soldier, right? You're with your Ash. So, like, I just want to... I want to see you get more in the mindset of, like... Helping your DPS a little bit here. Work with your DPS. Your Ramatra should be fine. You have a BAP. If your BAP needs help later on, you make the adjustment. But right now, I'm seeing a lot of... Okay, that's a good damage boost, by the way. This is good. Yes, correct. I like this. Nice job on damage boost in the Ramatra there. I don't I don't mind this play. This is good. Uh, Zerolik, thanks for the 53 months of the tier 1. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm going to be honest with you. You just got absolutely annihilated. Also, that's another reason why being with your DPS rather than just like kind of standing behind your tank is going to be a better option for you at that point. Because like those type of plays won't happen as much. Because like if you just sit there and and, and stick on your tank the whole time, that's what's going to happen. But that was a good play by a Junkrat regardless. I will say that. Right now what I'm seeing, and maybe I'm just like, I'm too, maybe I'm hyper focused on it a bit, but like you're definitely spending a majority of the game just healing your tank. And like you say like, Oh, like, why would they switch Life Weaver, etc.? It's because, like, they're just not seeing things work, so they're trying to go Life Weaver to do something different, right? But I really think you should prioritize a bit more of, of like, like for, like, for example, and I, I know we're going to be, like, we're, like, looking very deep into some of this, like, but, like, look at your soldier in front of you. Why, why are you healing your soldier when they're at full HP with a healing station down? Like, out of curiosity, like, why are you, why is that a thing? They have a healing station down, the damage boost to benefit them, and then you're just healing them. You see what I'm saying? So, like, th th this is where, you know, you said you want to keep climbing and you're in Masters now and you want to, like, do, like, this really good, like, min-max aspect. Like, you need to start really getting good at the min-max aspect, right? And a lot of good Mercies will be will get better at that is, like, their min-max will be... They'll have a good balance of healing, boot, like, healing um, usage and, and damage usage. Obviously, that can change on each game, right? Like, that that's something that can happen. But, like, so far, I've just watched you kind of, like, almost, like, heal bot the tank and then you, like, heal your soldier when they're at, like pretty much full HP, so then, like, you you really are just, like, in full heal your team mode, so, like, the utility you could bring with your damage boost isn't being used as much, and, like, there could be arguments that, like, when are you able to damage boost if your teammates are taking so much damage, but I think you also need to understand the aspect of, like, <laughs> honestly, that's just soldier all for you. You need to understand the aspect of, like, your damage increase to your teammates can be more beneficial than making sure your Ramatra is at 100% HP rather than 82% HP. Does that make sense? Do you get what I'm saying? To where, like, 
Your damage boost brings a lot more value to the game than you'll even, like, realize half the time. Like, you'll hear the sound, but, like, you won't even realize that. So, you, know what, you know what else? You know what else falls into that same category? Speed boost, right? Like, speed boost is, like, one of those things that you hear about how you want it all the time. But then, like, when you have speed boost, you don't recognize how good your Lucio's playing with that speed boost. And, like, you'll, like, the Lucio will be the first to blame if, like, something doesn't go right. But, like, most of the time, their speed boost is winning you team fights because, like, players are playing quicker. They're, they're, they're a lot harder to hit because they're all over. Like, it's just there's so many variations happening, but you don't even see that. And sometimes that can happen with damage boost. But, like, I'm telling you right now, increasing the, the damage of, like, one of your teammates on DPS can make it terrible for the other team for a long time. So that's why I think sometimes you need to really, like, recognize that you need to trust that your other support will keep your tank alive. Yes, here we go. This is what I want to see. Here we go. Much better. Now you're with your Ash, right? Okay. Uh, uh, honestly, I'll put that more in your Ash than you. Because I... Also, I love just watching the Junkrat do that. Uh, and the reason being is the Ash didn't need to drop down there at any point. So when the Ash dropped down, that was on them. Like, they had a good high ground spot and they fell down. So... But I do want to point out to you that that is a team fight that would have been tough if you just stood there and did nothing. Because you kind of gave your Ash a little bit more opportunity to survive. You go in there, the other team is distracted, and that's good. So this is why I want to see you, like, over with the Ash right now. Like, why are you on the Orisa doing this? Be with the Ash. You should have been on the Ash five seconds ago, right? You see what I'm saying? Why? Why are you still on the Orisa? Like, you wanted to talk about your 24,000 healing, but, like, why are why are you still just, like, sitting here on the Orisa? Like, go help go help your Ash. Work with your Ash. Work with your Ash. That's what I want you to do. Okay, now, I'll, now, now I'm going to be okay if you go and heal him for a second. Okay. That's on your Orisa. Okay, wonderful. Even then, that goes back to, like, a certain point you recognize you're not going to be able to heal him. That's, that's on your Orisa, by the way. That's not even on you. That's on your Orisa. You said uh, damage boost isn't shared. Technically, during Valkyrie, it is, but... Uh, which makes it easier for someone to say Mercy isn't doing anything. Well, that's also like Wrecking Ball, right? Sometimes there's going to be perceived value where like the player isn't even going to recognize the value you're bringing. But like I, what I do is like if I'm ever playing a hero that is in that like, like if I play Wrecking Ball, like players are like, what are you doing, Ball? When in reality on your screen, you're like, you're over here playing the hardest mini game of your life on Wrecking Ball. You're, you're, you're booping them around. You're getting everybody to the low HP. They're constantly turning around for you. And then you hear a teammate go, uh, Wrecking Ball, what are you doing? Right? So sometimes in Overwatch, you have this thing called perceived value. And I, oh, I mean, I, I, I just, I kind of started talking about that like a while ago, where like the value that's actually happening, your teammates can't see. And because they can't see that, they assume that you're being useless or not doing anything. But like, that's not always the case. Um, and you see that uh, Wrecking Ball is always a good example of that. Sometimes Doomfist is too, where like they only ever see you when you come back for like help and then you get rolled or something. And they're like, assuming you're just hard feeding when in reality, you're getting a lot of value. So that's why I say like, if you're, not going to heal your teammates or damage boost them because you're worried your teammates are going to say you're being useless or not doing anything. Like, you know what's going to end up being a great result across the board when your team wins because your damage boost is actually leading to good results. But if you get stuck heal bond your tank the whole time, it's not going to go well to begin with for your team and you're not going to enable your teammates to the best that they can do when you're in this type of situation, right? Like, I want to see you with your Ash way more than you are. Your soldier. Like, your soldier has all coming up, right? So, like, here we go. So, you res the Ash, right? They bobbed. You get out. I'm totally okay with this for now. But I want to see you, like, you know your soldier has all. Let's go, let's go, let's go help this soldier all right after this, right? Let's help this soldier all. Where, where's your soldier at? Right there. Go help him. Perfect. Absolute correct play. Just help him. Wonderful. You're hearing the sounds? It's, it's doing enough right now. All right? Going to the point because you have to. That's just a good grab. I will say, I think that... I, 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 I will say from the from the Mercy side of things, I do think Mercy gets a little bit more value on healing the tank now because of, like, the DPS passive change they made where it's only 10%. But, like, that doesn't mean you want to sit there and heal about the tank a lot, which we've seen a lot, especially prior to Season, like, 9. We saw a lot of, like, Mercies would do that where they just purely pocket the tank and they don't really bring that next value of damage. So, like, right now, I'm actually glad you're doing that play. And I'm not saying that, like, that is fine. Like, your teammate just got rolled and that's, that's definitely going to be on your soldier. But, like... I'm okay with that. I, you were, you were, you... Let me, let me point something out here. Like, that was a situation where, you know, you, your, your soldier died, right? Okay. That, that, that sucks, right? Your soldier had an opportunity. Also, I love how your soldier got rezzed, and I want, I, I don't know if anybody can see this bottom left, but do you see the soldiers, what they're about to run into? Feels bad for that soldier, huh? Gets rezzed, and that was a junk rat tire. Um, but yeah, like, when, when you're sitting here, like, I want you to look at the positives of that play, though. You were damage boosting your Soldier 76, okay? You were, you were damage boosting them. 
All right? And then what happens next? Two of them die of your soldier because your soldier is causing issues, right? So there's the value that you're not necessarily seeing um, from your other teammates, but like they had a dive with two people. Now, your, your soldier dying there, in my opinion, was on your soldier because like generally when you play soldier, you want to like sit there, do damage, and then run. They stayed there for too long, so that's going to be on them. But like that's, that's what I mean about go with your DPS, help them, enable them a bit more, and that can lead to good results. You didn't win this team fight, but obviously like, if they have to dive your teammate on an angle with two people, that, that's going to be a good thing for your team because you've, you've now created other matchups elsewhere that could benefit your team. So, um, it, it, just point being is there's a lot more involved in that that I, I yeah, okay. I'm still watching. Yes, so, so somebody did have a high death count on their team, but I also want to like kind of put into perspective on some of like how that goes, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a second, right? Good pal. I, I, I see. By the way, chat, those are the type of like ultimates I like where you don't necessarily need the Valk, but what you're doing is when you Valk, that's going to help your team a little bit more. Now, you can blame your Pharah all day long for having a lot of deaths, but if you notice, rather than just like stick with your team and win the team fight guaranteed, you flew into a Junkrat and got rolled. So now, yes, your Pharah hasn't been playing perfect, um, who was the soldier from earlier, by the way, which soldier will definitely get a little bit higher death count. Um, but you can blame them all day long or say they did this or show your stats, but that was a decision you made right there to go do that, all right? It worked out because you won, but you see what I'm saying. Win the team fight. I did like the Valk, though. Like, outside of what you did with the Valk after, I did like the Valk timing. That was a correct timing, and I would continue to do that, all right? Now, once again, now, chat, let me, let me pause this for a second because, because one of the they really did want to mention is you definitely did talk about how your Farah had a lot of deaths. But let me ask you this question, chat. And you've been watching, you know, the same game as I have been right now. Let me ask you this question. How often has this Mercy been with that soldier slash Farah throughout this whole game? The one that they're mad about having a lot of deaths. Okay. And then how often have you seen that Mercy go and res them? A few times. So when you're getting res, right, and this player's dying a lot, sometimes it could be hand in hand. One, you're not with them. So a DPS player trying to be a little bit more proactive making plays, which we haven't seen you with them too often. And then you end up resing them after they do this play, which of course, if they get res trying to make a play, they're going to be out of position a little bit, which then farms another death, right? So that can also happen. Just remember that. This is better. Now you're with your, now you're with your, your Farah, and now we can see if like how they'll do, right? This is good though. This is gonna create space for your team. It's gonna it's gonna give them other things to worry about, right? So keep doing what you're doing. Stay with your Pharah. Don't worry about anybody else for a second. Just just stick with your Pharah. I will say they definitely play a bit more of a flora. That's for sure. Yep. This is good though. Yes, this is correct so far. You, you, by the way, I want to point out you were keeping your Pharah alive there the whole time. So what happens now when I, I want to point out by the way. How many times did you watch your Farah get low? Let's talk about that very quickly. How often did you see the Farah get low, chat? Quite frequently, right? But what was the difference maker there, right? What was the difference maker there with the Mercy? You ready? The Mercy was healing the Farah. So that way there was going to be less deaths happening to the Farah because you are healing them. Now you go, they didn't get any kills. Sometimes you don't need to get any limbs. You just need to be a presence on the map. You get that? That's it. So when you sit there and you enable your Farah to make a play and to help out your Farah, right? You have now created more for your team than just heal bot in your tank and then getting mad that your DPS is dying. You get what I'm saying? So like, look at the difference that happens there. A team fight that was being normally lost because you were constantly down one, you now have started to help your DPS go and make more plays or survive them. And that alone is helping your team have longer sustained fights, which is gonna win you more team fights, right? Does that make sense? I don't mind this aggressive Valk again. Once again, chat, I talk about this all the time. Players get a little bit too hesitant to use their ultimates towards the end of points, and especially when you have a lot of time on the clock to go with it. I always say this, win the damn team fight, and then 
worry about your ult economy after. And what I mean by that is like, you know, maybe there's a minute 30 left and like you're not going to have time to finish the map if you don't do this and that. Like I can see like being really like the risk reward is you want to have time on the clock so you save your ultimates. But if you have five minutes, hit the ult button, get the point, and you'll build up an ultimate in less than a minute. Well, I say less than a minute, like a minute and a half, two minutes, and then like they're going to have to use ult anyway. Right? Or you snowball and you just win. Anyway. That's kind of like, I don't even know what's on you. Like, you kind of got boot back. That was kind of just like a good play by their Junkrat, and then, like, your Pharah did exactly what you're going to do. Your Pharah's going to trade ultimates a lot of the time. Like, it, like, if a Pharah gets a successful ultimate without dying, are they even using a successful ultimate, you know? Or when this is Masters on console, which is also top 500. Uh, which Masters is becoming more and more top 500 now. Just to point that out, by the way. When they did the rank squish a few uh, a few seasons ago, it definitely, it, it definitely puts it more towards Masters will be in the top 100 range. Uh -oh. Okay, your DPS made a huge play. I don't mind this res. This is good. You're kind of defaulting back to this play, but I'm okay with it for now. You gotta love the random junk rat trap in the middle of the open. Thank you, Sigma. They saved you. Okay, you actually legit did thank them. Love to see it. What are the new Ryan weapon stuff? 2 p.m. Eastern. 2 p.m. Eastern. We're watching still. There you go. Yep, there's the res. Junkrat's doing damage to him. By the way, getting mad about your teammate dying to a Junkrat. You've died to a Junkrat many times with the same random stuff. It happens. Uh, big slam alert! Can't do anything about that. Your Mago's gonna die regardless because of how long Shatter lasts for. I mean, Shatter only lasts for, what, four and a half minutes now? And just so you know, I, I know that that's... Ryan is needed stuff. Shatter definitely is far, though. Here we go. Wait for it. Uh huh. Good pick by your May. Please, yeah, 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 yes, yes, you're doing this right. Yes. Don't worry about your tank for a second. That's all, that's just a good play by their man. I mean by their um by their Adam. Still watch it. Oh how Malga is still like a pick people go now. Isn't it great? I love playing against Malga. It's you know what it is? It, it like playing against a Malga now, it's not even like Malga's like unreal. It's just like players are just recognize the experience of when they played against Malga too, and it's just like this isn't fun to play against that. Because you know what it's gonna lead to. Your tank's position will just be getting shredded by a Mauga the whole time. I don't mind the Valk. We'll see how it goes. There's a tire, so one of your teammates will die to it. Unless they kill it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, you do. You can res this if you want. I'm okay with it. Yeah, now it's going to look like a worse res, but I get your timing. Because you may die. Oh, I don't know if you've noticed it, what's happening is your May wants to play aggro and your tank wants to play like kind of in between. That's also why you you heal your tank a lot or you feel like you have to because your tank's position sometimes turns into like them. They kind of like get stuck in the mud is, what, is how I always refer to it. Where they like stop and then your May gets ahead of them and then gets rolled. Your May just plays at a different pace sometimes. As I say that, they actually run in. So it feels good, man. But they had their ultimates. That makes sense. There you go. You got, they got the team fight. You have more to this. You res the May. Now, I will say, your May definitely, definitely is... Oh, that's my mouse moving. You're definitely having a, a, a good amount of deaths. I, I, I can I can see that um, on your May. But, like, I also think that... I also do feel like you've kind of enabled your DPS a bit more now, though. On, on Especially on first and second, which is why you saw good results. Um, and that's kind of led to, like, more pressure. Which, once again, like, even something as simple as, like, breaking a shield may not be, like, 
seen as like a big deal, but you break like you damage boosting your teammate to help break a shield quicker is is like huge. That's what that anyway, just a little side note to all that is what I'm noticing. Yep. You said you said the the Mauga's E currently. Yeah, I will say one thing, a little bit of a tip against Mauga now, and once again, this will play differently in every rank. It's a three second window now. It used to be like five seconds. Like it, there is a huge nerf on that side of things to where you just need to wait out the three seconds of the cardiac overdrive and then you're in a much better spot. But a lot of players fight into it rather than disengage it. And what I mean by fight into it, right, is that they'll like, they'll just like, they'll see that they, they pop the, the obvious cardiac overdrive, like, like the way the animation shows. And then they'll sit there and they'll try to duel them at that 100% at that, the lifesteal and they're like, what the heck? When if they just wait three seconds, the Mauga becomes like 10 times easier to kill. Like, way easier to kill. So, good res. Boba Toast, thanks to the 16 months of the British Marathon, and Myriad Pro, thanks to the 6 months of the Thank you. Yep. That's what I'm saying. The smaller duration makes it a lot easier to play against it, yes. But I think a lot of players play into the Cardiac Overdrive, and that becomes a problem. Right? Once again, I, a real difference you've made from the first half and the second half is you really are sticking with your DPS more. And I want you to remember that. Because there's things that you're like, they, right there was a, like a case in point of that where you damage boost your Pharah and it leads to good results, even if like you're not seeing them pop off in the way that you expect them to pop off. And now that you've been assisting your DPS way more, like, yeah, they, 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 they farmed a bit of deaths here, here and there, first and third, etc. But like, I also feel like this is also you just actually being with your team. Now, now, yeah, we're going to reverse back on that one. That's on your Farah. Yes, if your Farah decides to run into them like that rather than spam them back, that's going to be on them. So I can 100% agree. And I, I will say, your teammate definitely probably has had a bit of a frustrating play style for you. But like sometimes, and I do want to point this out, sometimes when you have that aggressive teammate who wants to be aggro and go for playmaking, that is also sometimes who you want to damage boost. Now, I'm not saying you fly in with them. Your, your decision not to fly in with the Farah is the correct play. But sometimes DPS and that, I mean, not DPS and uh, damage boost in that player is going to lead to good results for your team. It does come with a little got bit of risk reward. Ten ads first. Oh, there you go. You got you, you to love the risk reward of it first, right? Um, but you made the correct play there in the sense that once your Farah got into like, yeah, you're playing way too aggro, then you can like, then you can like stop healing them or, or damage boost them and like not go in with them so you, you both get killed. But like, you need to at least get to the moments where that becomes a thing. And a lot of the game, you weren't doing that. And you've seen good results by damage boosts in this Farah that you've also, like, been mad about, right? You've seen good results from them. Um, so sometimes it's okay to go, okay, yeah, they're a bit too aggro. Yeah, they're making a couple of mistakes for sure. But, like, they're also enabling team fight wins for us, right? Because keep in mind, the only reason why the cart even gets to this point is because your Farah got the pick on this Ana when you were damage boosting them. Now, imagine if you weren't damage boosting them or healing them at that point. This may not happen, and now the cart is back here. And then you just, that's it. See what I'm saying? Uh, Leap Year, thanks to the five months of the tier one. Thank you, appreciate it. And um, Snurpee, thanks to the three months. Thank you, appreciate it. Anyway, hope that's helpful. I would Valk much sooner. I don't know why you didn't Valk that to begin with. Um, that ended up being a very risky play by you. Uh-oh. Careful of the high noon. Okay, your teammate survived it. I'm surviving that. Oh, it was a tire. Yes, yes. Nice. By the way, they died to the Junkrat because they were stuck in place. I know you mentioned they died to Junkrat a couple times. Two of the times I've seen them die to Junkrat is because they've had to be where they're at. It was like, there's nothing they can do. Junkrat just hit some good shots. You got a code for a rival? Oh, heck yeah. Uh, Garrick, thanks for the 39 months of the tier one. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. Did you see what I'm saying, though? There's a lot of stuff you can definitely improve on and fix. Um, and it doesn't mean that, like, your teammate was playing necessarily terrible. I just feel like your teammates, I feel like you're now enabling your teammates more to pop off. And I've always say, if you enable your teammates to pop off, it enables you to pop off and your team to pop off. And that's what's happening. You just went from not really focusing on keeping your DPS alive and keeping them off or damage boost them to you have. And while some of the fights are a little bit scrappy, I think it's been a good result, right? You know what I mean? Rival starts at like 6 p.m. Now keep in mind, that Farah is playing aggro. So like, 
at a certain point, you're going to want to stop going in with them, but, like, it's it's still working because they're creating space. Valk now. Just Valk. Just Valk. Right now. Go. Three, two, one. Valk. 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 Okay. Now stay with your Pharaoh a little bit during this. Yes, correct. Let, let your Mori take care of this. Go into damage boost mode now. Your Mori has ult. Damage boost mode. Perfect. Wonderful. Remember, your Pharaoh also that you you complained about when it got an early pick. Once again, it's very risk reward style at times, but like the more you've been supporting them, the better results for you. All right. Do you see how you kept your Pharaoh alive there? Normally, you would just leave him there. Normally, you would just leave him there. So. All I'm saying is this. You, you can... Mention your teammates' stats all day long. You can say they did this, they did that, but when your teammates needed to clutch it, they played well, and you have a 6-3 to three on a Blizzard World. I take that any day of the week. I once again want to point out to you, yes, your teammate is aggressive. Yes, they farmed a little bit more deaths than they probably should, but I also want to point out to you, the more that you've assisted your DPS, the better the results. Are you seeing the difference now of how you started the game, where you spent more time just healing your tank and focusing on your tank, and the, now that you've trusted your other support who you also questioned their support pick of going life weaver has now managed to keep your tank alive in most team fights so and now you're helping see that makes sense did you see how you're seeing better results now that you've done that it, it, it throughout the game that's what's changed that is what's changed your teammates your teammates aggressive play style has not shifted but the way that you've changed your play style has and has seen better results so that's why i think like you're better off starting your games Assisting your DPS a little bit in those in those spots and then see how it goes and to make adjustments after because now that your tank has been able to survive and stuff It's been good Right and your tank doesn't have you don't have to worry about keeping your tank up the whole time because your Moira has in my opinion been doing a good job of keeping them alive Right and then they also went Sigma so they can play a little bit more passive and then you can just worry about healing your your Pharah That's it Feed the Pharah. Right, yeah, exactly this right here. Boom. Perfect damage boost. Don't even worry about your Sigma right now. That's on your Farrer a little bit. Also, you could have maybe healed him a little bit further during that, but I think the I think the Ana just hit good shots. So I won't even like hold that against you. That I think the Ana just hit really good like consistent shots. Yep, I'm watching you. I'm watching. Good heals once again, and, and this goes back to the difference that we've had in this game. You're keeping your DPS alive now when they're getting dove. That was working for the other team to begin with. It doesn't work anymore. It does not work anymore. You see what I'm saying? So it's a good thing. And you've been a part of making sure that happens while your Moira has made sure your tank is able to do stuff. Now the other team feels obligated to keep like diving this Pharah that you've now kept alive. And look what happens. The, 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 the Diva's trying to dive the Pharah. The Sigma hits a good rock on them doing that. Now their Diva's really low. Now you're in a spot where you can pop Valk soon. You, you have Valk coming up. Keep your Pharah alive. Perfect. Wonderful. Good job. And see, you were so worried about There we go. You won the game there. You were so worried about, like, how many deaths your Pharah had, right? That was like, oh, I can't believe they, you know, they did this, they did that, etc. But, like, look at this. Look what happened when you started to enable this player rather than just worry about, like, your tank getting healed up by you as Mercy. Do you see the difference in how this game was? How we had so many moments where we paused and showcased that, like, you weren't doing that. But then in the end, the, the, the hero that you were so worried about the most was also a hero that went and popped off. Right? And yes... Could they, could they, instead of like, what do they have, like 23 deaths? Listen, would, could, they, could that have been more on the 12 to 14 death range? Yeah, I think you would, if you're going to be an aggressive player, that's probably what you want to aim for, uh, to not be in the 23, but it's also a 6-3 six to, six to three game, so you're going to have more deaths, and then if you get res, it kind of goes up even more so, right? So, a uh, point I'm trying to make here is, I want to see you go a bit more into damage boost than your, your DPS from the get-go, rather than going into heal bot your tank mode. You can make your adjustments later, but I really want you to default to, to enabling your DPS at the beginning because sometimes that's also a confidence booster for your teammate, right? Imagine you damage boost your Soldier 76 at the beginning. You, you, they, they hit a cool helix and the limb, and now your teammate's feeling great and it's already off to a good start. Sometimes a good start to a rank game leads to really good results. Sometimes it doesn't, but like it's better to obviously win an early team fight and do that. And I think sometimes... I, I just felt like you went into heal bot mode really early, and that's why the results were how they were initially. And then when you finally started to play Mercy, how you would want to play Mercy more, especially in Masters, enabling your teammates, much, much better results. So I, I hope you're, you get what I'm saying, and I hope that's helpful to you. Because I think there's a lot of like, oh, I, you know, I don't want to blame anybody, but they did this, they did this. But I think like, look at the things that you adjusted and fixed rather than like 
just complaining about your teammate having that many deaths because I think your teammate still ended up being a huge part of why you won this game. And you you were a part of that too. I think you played fairly well at times. I think there's just things you need to change from like a from a um uh play style. Very slightly. But you got this, and I think you can definitely climb if you start to do a little bit more of that. All right? You got this. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to all three YouTubes if you haven't. Uh, leave a comment. All of that helps. If you want to submit your own spectating or pretty much anything we do video-wise, my Discord in the description, that's where you go. Join that. Uh, we also record these live on stream. You can see below the webcam. You see the Twitch chat right there. We have a lot of fun. Also stream on YouTube, so if you want to go there, a lot of fun across the board. And with that being said, I hope you all have an amazing day slash night.